I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder and I'm like a hair monster. My hair has a life of its own, you guys. <laughs> Well, hello there. I'm Nusha, also known as Ferocious and Pretty Pens, and welcome back to another video. For today, we are going to be doing my monthly hits and misses. And I know I literally just filmed one of these for the month of May, but with the closing of June and the fact that I missed a couple of uploads that month because I was sick, I sound a lot better in this video, don't I? I don't sound all nasally and like I'm gonna die. That was like really dramatic and it didn't need to be like that. <laughs> My bad. Anyway, I sound a lot better in this video and I'm feeling a lot better, so we're gonna film the June hits and misses anyway. This channel is not just about hits and misses. There's more content coming, so don't you worry. There's stuff coming, my friends. No need for concern and, and doom and gloom. <laughs> Not that anybody's dooming and glooming over my content, but that's okay. In my mind, they are because because I'm fierce, ish. <laughs> All right, now to to the content for the month of June. I only purchased one pen. That's right, one Uno. Ah, uh. and so here are the pen positions, including that one pen. The first one that I'll go over, I just did a review on this, and if you haven't seen it, I will link it up here in the cards. Take a look at that, but after you're done watching this amazing video. And that is of the ST DuPont D-Line Guyot Aquamarine. And um, yeah, still a beautiful pen, still really love it, and I've been using it pretty consistently for the last week and a half or so, so I'm excited. The next pen acquisition is one that I didn't buy for me, but was given to me by a good local friend of mine for doing her a favor, which I would have done for her any day, all day. No big deal, but she decided to gift me this pen. She is someone that when she purchases these custom hand porn materials by some of our favorite indie brands and, and blank makers, she just has the best luck in, in what she gets. And this pen that she gave me is like, I don't know who made the blank. I don't know who finished the pen. I, I know nothing about it. All I know is that Homegirl has good taste and she gave me one that is just beautiful. I mean, look at it. The variations are there, the different materials are there, and uh, super exciting, I think. The last penquisition, which is an actual penquisition because I paid for it, is the Mao John A2, I believe it is. And it comes in this box, and as you can see, I haven't even really opened it yet. The pen is still in the thing, and the booklet just fell, and that's okay, because we're not reviewing it for this video. But this is for an upcoming video that I'm filming comparing it to the Pilot Vanishing Point. So technically, I bought it, but I bought it specifically to do a review, so did I really buy it? It's like that age-old question. If a tree falls in the woods and nobody hears it, does anybody hear it? So if a person buys a pen and nobody knows about it, did you really buy a pen? Okay, don't ever use that logic because you will become poor. <laughs> don't do that. And there you have it. The Penquisitions. Wee! Now for the currently inked. Ooh, jazz hands. Here's the normal notebook that I always do this in. Let me just flip to the page. And I warn you, this version of currently inked is a little bit rough because I was trying to hurry through it. But it is what it is, and it's still the currently inked, so let's do it. Now, uh, you're going to see a couple of different repeats, like last time, but there are a couple things that I wanted to point out as we go through. And, and those are, let's see, this Diamine Flamingo Pink is such an interesting color in that it's a little bit deeper than what you would imagine a flamingo being as far as them being pink. It shades very well and it does have a propensity to sheen to the point where when I use this on Tomoy River paper, I thought this was a Krishna ink for a minute, but it's not. But I uh, thought, so that's the first one. And then other ones that I haven't pointed out. Um, oh, Okay, so Pilot or Shizuku inks tend to be very wet, 
And if you look at these two samples of writings that I did, they both feathered on this paper. And it's because it's such a wet ink and I may have not put anything underneath my hand when I was writing. So there's that. Honorable mention for Robert Oster's Dark Chocolate. If you've never used this ink color, it's such an interesting ink color because it's like this reddish purple brown. I love how it shades and it's fairly well behaved. Now if we go on to the next sheet, honorable mention Robert Oster's Blue Moon up here. I freaking love this shimmer ink. It's like perfectly named for what it is. It has a blue shimmer on top of a blue ink that does have a tendency to sheen a little bit, but not like crazy sheen, like the elegant haloing sort of sheen situation. And then these two I put down here because they were afterthoughts after it already filled out the rest of the page. But this is the pen my friend got me and I think I I believe I believe it's a tailored pen company Churchill but I'm not sure and I'm too lazy to ask her <laughs> so there you have it I usually do in this portion of the currently inked couple of, like interesting things about the pens that I have inked and stuff oh as I smack the camera one of the things that I wanted to show you guys is this Enlisted Flex. And the Enlisted Flex is by Pen Realm, Kirk Spear, and he doesn't sell these by themselves anymore, but you can get them on Scriptorium pens. I just wanted to show you this because uh, I think it's a good one. If you have an opportunity to get your hands on it, I think you will like it. I have it in this pen, and this is what it looks like my friends so he's basically taken an extra fine and taken the slip from here all the way up to the top and he has also added a couple of extra slits to the sides this is what allows it to flex more so than just a regular nib i just wanted to show you this and the other thing about this is that if you have one of these currently try not to take it out of your your pen body often because when you put force on the actual nib unit itself, it has a tendency to malalign it and you won't get the same performance anymore. So I've basically always just left this enlisted nib in this pen and I haven't touched it since I put it in here for that very reason. So I just wanted to show you the performance of this. This is not his most flexy work, but this is, from an extra fine to like a triple broad almost, or a 1.1 stub. So it performs really well as I'm off camera. And I just, I wanted to show this to you guys because, I don't know, there's something satisfying about showing off different aspects of flex. And this is a little bit stiffer than the Secretary Deflex, which is the other one that he has. And I have that somewhere. Maybe I'll film a flex off video. Um, but I just wanted to share this with you guys so that you see what a more modern flex should look like. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys, if I zoom back out, I think for these types of videos, it might be a good idea to highlight some of the independent pen maker pens that I have because I have a lot of them here. These are all materials that have been hand poured by these indie pen makers. So here are the pens and I'm gonna go through them by maker. So this is the Scriptorium Pens Tolkien and the material is Water Lily by Bob Dupross, and it almost looks like a Monet painting in a way. I love it. This is the Pishavin, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and if I got it wrong, I apologize, Penn's Waverly model, and this is in the material Nautical Dusk. I freaking love this material, like hard. Like, I want to squish it with my lovin's hard. <laughs> that was a weird thing to say. 
These two are London Pen Company, and you can tell they've been well loved. This one is the Dupross Teal Abalone, and this is the Carolina Pen Company Water Lily Koi. And London Pen Company has made some changes since they first poured these, because I bought this in the very beginning of, I think, when they were getting up and running, in that their finishes were mainly this more satiny matted finish and they've gone and also incorporated more of a glossy finish but i do also think that the more you use these pens that are more matte finishes the more they end up becoming glossy over time because i don't remember these being as glossy as they are right now so that might be a thing and then these two you should be familiar with these are both tailored pen company this is the asher in their Tiffany stained glass. And this is the uh, Gourmet Pens exclusive Man of War jellyfish situation. Oh, and this is the, the pen in question that I think is also a tailored pen company pen. Which, um, Nicole, if you're watching this, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> really good craftsmanship. I think that any of these pen makers, if you were to get a pen from them, you would thoroughly enjoy, especially if it's a material that you have your eye on. And the cool thing about these pen makers is that they take individual photographs and sometimes videos of these specific pens. So you're not just saying, oh, I want something that's, you know, Water Lily Koi by Jonathan Brooks, Carolina Pen Company, and you get some random Water Lily Koi that you didn't really get to hand select. Most of these guys take pictures of these and you get to see it in action before you buy it. All right, now moving on from the currently ink to the hits and misses. Now, the hits and misses from here on in are going to be more general hits and misses. They're not going to be just the hits and misses within the realm of the fountain pen hobby. They're going to be personal things and updates, and they're also going to be with other mediums and art supplies and tools and things like that. The first hit, at least in my opinion, for the month of June, I decided to quit my job. <laughs> now you might be kind of scratching your head there going, hmm, Nisha, how is that a hit? Well, my friend, let me tell you, that's a hit because towards the end of last year, I was struggling at work because my father was very ill and I had a very, very, very demanding job. One that I consistently asked for additional resources and headcount, the original headcount that was promised to me, and I just couldn't get leadership to budge. And so when my father got ill, it just added an additional variable, negative variable to the entirety of everything that was going on and, and stressed me out even more. I wasn't sleeping at all really. I was having panic attacks and I just felt burnt out, undervalued. Just, it, it was like the perfect storm. And my father and I weren't very close. So I, I felt as if I had to do something. And that was basically taking a sabbatical. And in the month of December through January, I basically got up and went to Brazil, which is where he lived and spent about a month and some change with him. Got to spend my first Christmas with him since I was maybe five or six years old and made some new memories and in May of this year he passed away. So that's time that if I didn't do what I did I would have never had that chance and I wouldn't trade that month that I spent with him for anything and looking back on it I'm glad I did it. Why did it take me so long to decide to quit? I honestly thought I was going back at some point, but between the sheer thought of even going back to work, giving me anxiety and those panic attacks, to just coming to the realization that if you're in need and your employer doesn't care about you enough because your family is sick to give you time off or to be supportive, yeah, they give you lip service and they say, oh, we're we're here for you, but they don't actually do any of the things that express those words, then they don't care about you. And quite frankly, I would rather find something different or whatever, and I have. 
So I quit my job and I'm doing consulting work now for marketing and it's been a huge weight off of my shoulders and it's been a complete hit because this is the happiest that I've been in a couple of years now. Like I said, when trade any of the things that I've learned in the last seven or eight months for anything. So that's the first hit. The second hit slash third hit, we'll say, are teal and turquoise pens. Now, the first pen that I'm going to show you is the Pilot Vanishing Point. I believe it's crushed velvet or tropical velvet or this pen I initially passed on. I think it came out in 2017 and I saw it in 2022 at the Colorado Pen Show and it was secondhand and I thoroughly enjoy using it. I like Pilot Vanishing Points, but when this came out in 2017, I was like, meh, like I have my rotten ones and those ones are just great and super hot. I don't need another one <laughs> and I didn't. So when I saw this years later and I still thought it was pretty and I'm finally kind of sort of ish over rotten, but not 100%, I decided to go ahead and buy it. Now the lesson in this is to say that don't buy into fear of missing out FOMO. Don't buy into it. If you're even slightly unsure about buying a pen, don't buy it just because it's a limited edition, special edition, whatever. It's okay to pass on it, and if it's meant to be, it'll be. You'll find it later in the secondhand market. And when you do it that way, you're saving some green in your wallet. Because most of the pens that I pass on or whatever, they're not grail pens. You know what I mean? They're nice to have pens. And that's a lot of times what FOMO makes us do is buy a bunch of nice to have pens and then we don't know what to do with them. So that's the lesson. The third one is the Twisby Classic Turquoise. Now, Twisby released this when I was fairly new to the hobby six or seven years ago, I want to say. They haven't really released much of anything in the classic line since. Not that I'm trying to give them ideas of like more stuff to release, because honestly, there's enough Twisbys in the world right now. But what I am saying is that this is one of those few things that I stumbled across that I'm really happy with still years and years later. Now on to the misses. Get ready because it's going to be some piping hot tea. Just kidding. It's really not. The first miss for the month of June is the Leonardo Pens collaboration with Endless Pens and Nibs and Flourishes. Now this isn't a huge deal, but it's just a pet peeve of mine. The pen was supposed to be shipped out in the month of June. I just received an email this morning that it shipped out. We're in July and it's a couple of weeks late at this point. And I realize delays happen, materials get back ordered. I 100% understand. But what I will say is this, when you know that something is going to be delayed, maybe send out an email to the people that you know have bought it. I'm talking to you, Endless Pens, and just let them know, hey, we're anticipating a different ship date. Here's the new ship date for your records. And that's it. That's all you had to do. But you didn't do that. So am I peeved with that? Yeah. Am I annoyed beyond repair? Absolutely not, because, you know, these things happen. Editing Nusha here, and I just received a shipping notification that my box with the pen in it has been delivered, and yet I still stand by everything that I said about notifying people if you are going to be late on the timing of something that you promised in your webpage. And that's all I'm going to say about it. So uh, back to your regularly scheduled programming. The second miss. This is a miss on the part of artistry. I have been getting into colored pencil drawing for a while now, and there is somebody that I follow here on YouTube called LaCree Fine Art Studio, I believe is her full handle, and she did this YouTube tutorial on drawing a cheetah with colored pencil, and I did the drawing and everything, and then I realized I did it on like a white background, which is what she had recommended of just the paper. And being the fact that I am very clumsy and apparently a very like dirty handed person, I always have ink on my hands except for today, I got smudges and smooshes and whatever on the paper 
And so I had to color in the background. Well, the background's a pretty big area and colored pencil drawings take forever. Well, now fast forward to the fact that I may have ruined this drawing by trying to draw in the background after the fact. And then I switched from colored pencil to pan pastels, back to colored pencil, back to pan pastels. <laughs> I think I've completely ruined this thing. But the point is the, the cheetah still looks freaking amazing as you can see, but I just need to figure out how to fix the freaking background. If you're an artiste that uses these kind of tools and you have some tips and tricks, please leave them in the comments. The third miss. This is one that absolutely breaks my heart. I have this Aurora 88. This is a limited edition rose gold demonstrator, but I just realized that the cap, the clear acrylic cap has a crack in it. And I am utterly and deeply heartbroken because I don't know what to do with this. Does Aurora send replacement caps? How much am I going to have to freaking pay for that dang thing? I don't really have the means to just willy-nilly pay for repairs or parts or anything like that. So if you have experience with this with Aurora, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. There you have it. <laughs> the June hits and misses. Do you have ideas for, for other videos that I should be recording? I know there have been some gems in the comments in the last couple of months, and those videos are coming. And um, if you're somebody that just reads the comments and you see something you agree with, thumbs it up, because that helps me see that it, there's more than one person that thinks that. Anyway, I just wanted to say I love you all so much in that this is probably one of the best parts of my day-to-day -day is interacting with you guys in the comments and via YouTube and Instagram and things like that. And it's because you guys are so positive. And in all of the hardships and things like that that I had going on in the last six plus months, y'all have been there for me and some of you have really like made me full on belly laugh and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for staying positive. Thank you for all the encouragement. So I hope you're doing well wherever in the world you may be and don't forget, keep writing. I can't I can't talk. Ah. Why am I so awkward, my friends? Because the microphone is down here. Oh, yeah. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Why? Why did I do that? I don't know. I think it's because having this microphone makes me feel like a natural woman. Yeah. Sorry. Right.